Good afternoon to you alumni and friends. Thank you for joining us today for helping professionals navigate LinkedIn. I'm Alexa Demsky, the Assistant Director of Alumni Outreach Programs and a proud 2013 graduate of Towson University. Before I introduce our speaker, I wanna share a few housekeeping notes. Attendees will remain muted throughout the webinar. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature in your meeting toolbar and send to the panel. We will be monitoring the Q&A throughout the session and we'll take additional questions at the end of the presentation. This webinar will be recorded and shared on our social media platforms in the coming weeks in case you missed something during the presentation. I'd now like to introduce Colleen McKenna, a 1983 TU graduate and a member of the TU Business and Leadership Alumni Alliance that is open to all TU alumni who are interested in connecting with other alumni through professional and social networking opportunities. Colleen launched Intero Advisory for individuals and companies focused on increasing their sales and talent initiatives. Since 2011, Intero Advisory, a LinkedIn consulting, coaching, and training firm has been engaged by more than 600 companies who have increased their presence, revenue, and hiring opportunities through applying Colleen's insight, strategy, and techniques to tens of thousands of business professionals. Colleen has worked with and for startups to market leaders like Xerox, Consolidated Graphics, and Care First. Thank you, Colleen, for leading today's presentation. Great, thanks so much. It's so great to be with everyone. And we have a lot to cover. So I hope you're ready for a fast-moving, action-packed session. And I love the chat. So whether you use the Q&A, which Stephen and Alexa can monitor, or you use the chat directly, I would love your questions, comments, even as we go, if we're gonna handle it and talk about it later, I will let you know. How many of you um, on the call today are here because of either business development efforts or branding or job search? So just put in the chat your number one outcome for LinkedIn and what you wanna do. Job search, great, business development, terrific business development. It's so fascinating that over the last 10 weeks, the conversation really has moved almost exclusively to either job search or business development, where before it was on the recruiting side. So we're going to talk about all of this because whether you're in a job search, you need to think about branding, you're on the hiring side, or it's business development, development and sales, everything I'm going to talk about will apply to you. So definitely put in your questions. My background is business development and sales. It's all I've ever done. LinkedIn is by far the best tool I've ever used for that effort and continue to use for that effort, by the way. So what we're gonna talk about today is starting and really enhancing your LinkedIn profile, building your personal brand. I can share that in all the conversations and I probably, um, completed probably, I would say, about 30 sessions just like this in the last two months, um, the focus on your personal brand has never been more important. You really need to think about this and how you show up and how you present to the world. So we're going to talk quite a bit about that. It is the foundation of LinkedIn. People come to LinkedIn to see your profile not necessarily your companies. It's always about the person first. So I really want you to think about this as we go through today's session. I want you to stand out in a way that nobody can be confused about who you are, the work you do, or why you do it. Last year, my team sourced over 54,000 LinkedIn profiles for our clients for business development or recruiting purposes. And I can tell you there's a really large number of those profiles where when we looked at them, we had no idea what that person did. Or that person's profile could have been picked up, copied, and pasted on about 10,000 other people's profiles. I want your profile not to be just your online resume, but a marketing and recruiting tool. And so we're gonna give you, I'm gonna give you tips today to get to that place because it is your story to tell and it will be increasingly more important. LinkedIn's never been busier than it is right now. So if you're new to LinkedIn, 
you really want to kind of catch up as quickly as possible. If you've been on LinkedIn for a long time, especially doing business development, I just want to give you perhaps a nugget or two to walk away with and think about so you can be more strategic. Once we look at your profile and build out your profile, then we move to your network. And people call me all the time and they say, I need more prospects. Um, I need to find more talent, uh, whatever. I need to find more. And that's easy. LinkedIn is a search engine, so we can absolutely do that. And I'm going to show you how to create searches so that you can find the people you're looking for. But my first question always becomes, who are you already connected to? Are you nurturing your current level connections? Over the last few weeks, this also has become increasingly important to consider. Nurturing your first level connections is a really powerful way to stay in touch and spark new conversations. And I'm going to show you how to download your first level connections so that you can begin to understand who they are and think about how you can nurture them. It may be you need to clean them out, right? You need to clean out your network so it can be more dialed in. So LinkedIn looks at your content on your profile and it looks at the relevancy of your network. And the more specific, the more LinkedIn's algorithm can help you find the opportunities you're looking for. So I want you to build a network that is engaged. So for some people, that could be 200 people. For recruiters, it might be 20,000 people. It all depends on your initiative and what your strategy is. So, you know, I highly suggest that if you're in a job search or really for anybody connect with recruiters and hiring managers, but specifically third party recruiters who have very large networks, their networks will be closed. However, the, because you're connected to them and they have a large network, it expands your network. My favorite people in um, anyone's network is really that small group of people that we call COIs, centers of influence. And these centers of influence are really important because they really are the catalyst for turning your network into a referral engine. 70% of people who are now in a job search will find their next job through their professional network. You're five times more likely to get a phone call or a meeting on the business development and sales side if you have an introduction. So your network really becomes your currency. It is very, very critical. And we're going to take a look at this. We're going to look at Towson's alumni um, university page and alumni network. I want you all to be um, connecting with TU alum because there is a built in affinity to that. And then I want you to start to be thinking about, and this relates back to your profile, being known, being recognized, building your subject matter expertise in a particular area. And really can making sure that you're putting a mark on your profile and your engagement and you're thinking about your point of view and what is the point of view that will build credibility for you. And finally, engaging, engaging with customers, prospects, employees, future talent, colleagues, alum, all these stakeholders build a really diverse and robust network. And that's what we want to make sure that you have. Staying up to date on industry um, information, competitors, very, very important, especially on the business development side. So I think that these looking at these four pillars, it really shapes what we're going to talk about and building a really strong and successful LinkedIn strategy. So how many of you have Googled yourselves lately? Just put yes and tell me what shows up when you Google yourself. If you haven't, you can, you know, Pick up your phone, your tablet, a second screen, Google yourself real quickly while I talk about what I'm thinking probably will come up for many of you. Google bases everything on trust rank. Great, Carlton, um, social networks, which one? Can you identify those? Heather, LinkedIn or Facebook profiles? So is LinkedIn coming up ahead of Facebook or Instagram or Twitter? Susan, papers written. Facebook, LinkedIn, okay. 
So remember, Google bases everything on trust rank. Typically, LinkedIn takes priority over every other social channel, unless you're doing a lot on all those other channels and nothing on LinkedIn. And the reason is because Google says LinkedIn is a really authoritative website. And LinkedIn is your up-to-date professional information. So Google extends some good SEO love to you as a member of LinkedIn for your profile. Melanie, LinkedIn first. Right. So the question becomes, if they can find your LinkedIn profile anywhere on page one of Google, or it's at the top one, two, three, or four, the question then becomes, if somebody clicks on that, do they see the best version of you? Do they have context for you? Context in a way that builds your story, that informs them about who you are, the work you do, why you do the work you do, and why they should connect with you or potentially work with you, hire you, refer you, the list goes on and on. So does it best represent you? And that's what we want to get to today. Everybody, it's a work in progress. So always updating your, your LinkedIn profile. It's a little bit like if you own a company, updating your website. We've got to keep it refreshed so that Google and LinkedIn continually work on your behalf. So we definitely want to do that. So Linda, company name. Okay, so maybe that's your company website, not sure but that would make sense. I'm sure you're mentioned quite a bit in that area. So Gary V, if everybody's familiar with Gary B, v, he's a big personality. He was one of the very first people to make um, a lot of money online through his YouTube videos. But I love his quote, your job is to tell your story. And that is very true for each person on this call. You really need to tell your story. And you need to build that out in a way that's interesting and credible. And so now I want to kind of jump in. I'm going to kind of switch over, go log into LinkedIn, and just take a look because it's much more interesting than just doing some slides. How many of you use your the app, your phone, to use LinkedIn more than your desktop? So just put mobile or desktop. More than 70% of people will be looking at your profile on their phone. So it looks like it's pretty even, it's interesting to see. And so we wanna design your profile for the small screen. However, I really encourage all of our clients and everybody I talk to, when you're going to use LinkedIn, especially for business development, or recruiting, whatever you're doing very intentionally, use your desktop. It'll be a whole lot easier. There's a couple of settings that we're gonna look at today that are not easy to asset, um, access from your phone. So we do see a lot of people kind of go off the rails just because they're using their phone. It's a little bit more complicated um, in terms of getting and having conversations that are in depth. And that is particularly true on the business development side. So we have clients who in their enthusiasm to respond quickly to, site, to someone who's interested in talking to them, they're just typing away, it kind of autocorrects and it just kind of makes the message uh, jumble. And that does not create a great first impression. So I'm gonna jump over to LinkedIn and I want to immediately show you some settings. And the reason I start here, before we even get to profile tips, is because I want you to understand how you can shape your strategy and how you engage on LinkedIn through the settings. And most people just don't even spend a whole lot of time here. And the crazy part is LinkedIn is always rolling things out, new features, they roll them back in, they roll them out randomly again, so they're kind of all over the board. And a lot of these get missed and they influence how you show up on LinkedIn. And I don't want you just updating your LinkedIn profile and pinging your network. So I wanna take a moment and come to top right corner under me and come to settings and privacy. I'm not going to look at all of them, but I do wanna point out some that are really, really important in my opinion. So under account, 
Um, this is just all really practical information. Make sure you remove those old email addresses, but that you do keep two email addresses, a personal and a professional. I prefer your professional email as your primary because this is a professional network. So I want you to scroll down here and just make sure that these settings are all set the way you want. If you're not sure of how to set them, I'm actually going to give you um, 30 days of free access to our membership platform at the end. And we have tutorials on all of this information and best practices. But just because of time today, I'm not going to get into specifics. But I want to look at a couple of settings in this privacy area. Edit your public profile. This is the information that people see if they're if they've heard about you and they just Googled your name and they're just clicking on your LinkedIn profile. It could also be the version that people who are connected to you see if they're not logged in right at that moment to LinkedIn. So this is where you can be visible or under the radar. First thing I want you to look at is top right corner. This is just customizing your URL so that it's nice and clean and you know that you even have a URL that you can use. I just need you to come into that blue pencil and take out all the numbers and letters and hyphens and just put your first and last name in there. If somebody already has your name, you'll be notified of that when you hit save and you'll put an initial in or a number at the end. We just want you to update this. This should go in your email signature. It can go on an executive bio page of a website in your proposals. If you write for a publication or you're presenting at a conference, they'll ask you for you, your URL and that is what that is. And then scrolling down, please make sure your photo is set to public so that regardless of whether you're connected to someone or not, everybody can see your photo. They, a lot of times, and I certainly adhere to this, if I can't see somebody's photo, I kind of keep moving. So we're very visually wired. Let's make sure people can see us. And then I just want you to decide which sections of your profile people can view. Okay. So real quick, just a couple of these. I'm going to look at a couple more. I'm just going to hit the back button here. Go back to my privacy. Who can see your email address? I always put my first level connections because sometimes um, that's very helpful. This is important. Who can see your connections? So if you and I are connected, the only people in my network that you're able to see are the connections we share in common because my network is closed. And if you have any questions while I'm talking about this, please pop them right into the chat. I've closed my network, not because I don't wanna be a good connector because I make a lot of connections for people. And, and make those introductions and like to do that. But because I have a lot of CEOs and presidents and owners of companies, and those people are really, really important to me. And I'm also connected to a lot of sales professionals who I teach how to look in other people's networks. So I need to make sure the integrity of my network is strong. So that's why I've closed my network down. Now, Viewers of this profile, this is something that very few people really pay attention to, but it is incredibly important. And I'm just going to open another window real quick and I'm going to see if I can find somebody. Great. So here's my friend Lee Peters. Notice all of these people showing up on the right hand side. I want this turned off because LinkedIn chooses this randomly, and I don't want people looking at other people when they're on your profile. Number one, especially if you're in business development or in a job search, because you don't control this. This could be competitors. This could be the person that, you know, in your office sat next to you. It could be completely random. I want you to turn that off so that people are only focused on you. If you do nothing else from today, please make sure you do that because that'll make a big difference. 
and then profile viewing options let people know that you've looked at their profile use linkedin as a soft touch eight to 12 touches on the business development side it will be eight to 12 touches i'm quite sure on the job search side as well at least in the temporary you know next few months use linkedin let people know that you've been on their profile on the sales side it's eight to 12 touches most people give up after four you're not on the radar till touch five so looking at people's profiles can be very helpful just use these soft touches of staying in touch it's very important and the last thing i want to show you in this area is where to download your first level connections so you're going to choose get a copy of your data want something in particular connections request archive it'll take about 10 or 15 minutes you'll come back here you'll download it it'll be a zip file that you'll open you will then see a csv file it will open in excel all of our clients go through this exercise it's a little bit like a cooking demonstration i already have it prepared for you just for time's sake when you download this information You'll see first name, last name, company, position, and when you connected with them. I want you to think about what's most important, position or company. I typically first sort it by position. So if I'm looking for a job, I need to see, am I connected to hiring managers, recruiters? If I'm in business development and I'm calling on the CFO, how many CFOs am I connected to? If I'm looking to build my network because I'm a more recent alum, I'm going to maybe sort it by company and see if I know people from Towson, or I might see, can tell by titles. I've got to begin to understand who I'm connected to. Has anybody downloaded their network like this before? Then what we do, once we sort it, we come in and we put columns in the front of that spreadsheet. Great, this is a great exercise. I promise you there are action and takeaway items from doing this exercise. Your columns may look different and your columns can be different, doesn't matter. What I want you to start to think about are your relationships to these people. My first column is K-N-O-W. No, I know these people, but I haven't talked to them in a while. They get a certain kind of message. The other people should know better. I met them at a networking event. Um, I talked to them. They're a prospect. They're somebody that was introduced to me. We had a good conversation, never really went anywhere. They get a different kind of message. Prospects. Prospects can be job prospects or business opportunity prospects clients, customers. I always find that on the sales side, most people are not connected to all of their customers and clients. Immediate takeaway. Identify five or 10 centers of influence. These centers of influence are so important more than ever. Maybe a professional organization. Maybe you have Towson in here. And this is especially true of this alumni association and why we're here today. Let's be connected to Towson alum and one another. I guarantee you will find new opportunities as a result of this community. My last column, delete. So if anybody has switched industries or might be switching industries, let's say from hospitality to IT, you need to jumpstart your network because LinkedIn's saying, oh, well, you know, Sam's connected to lots of people in hospitality. Oh, I think he's in IT now, but he's not connected to those people. So LinkedIn's not understanding it needs to find new people in a new industry. So sometimes those random, if it's too random, just remove them, keep it clean. So it's really dialed in and intentional. Okay, I know I went through that very quickly. Does that make sense to everybody? Is this an exercise that you can take a look at and find valuable? I, my guess is that everybody can find an opportunity and 
sort of a gap, if you will, fill in the gap, get connected to those customers and clients, get connected to Towson alum. Now you'll notice, do you delete people individually then? Yes. So now I'm gonna come back to LinkedIn and I'm gonna show you how to remove people. And so there's a couple of ways to do that. So here's Joe and I can look at Joe's profile. I think he's actually at Towson, isn't he? Yep, five years he's been teaching at Towson. I can go to more and I can hit remove connection. Joe will not know that I've removed him unless he goes to my profile and, set, and sees a second rather than a first. That would indicate that somebody I don't know is not gonna know to do that. Or I can come to my network and I can look at all my connections. I can just come in and let's see if I, there he is right there, three dots, remove connection. So I can do it a couple of different ways. But if you noticed in my first level connections, I did not see location, right? So I wanna find, maybe I wanna look by location. And don't worry, I have not forgot forgotten about the profile tips. So I just wanna finish this because we're sort of in that sequence. So here, what I want you to do is come hit search, hit that magnifying glass. Oh, that's interesting. Let me see if I can do that again. I might have to, uh... oh, that's so funny. This is LinkedIn being LinkedIn. So I haven't even been on here doing this today. So let me just see. So what I want you to do, and I'm just gonna walk you through it because I don't wanna keep clicking through. You're gonna hit this magnifying glass and along here, you're gonna see something that says all filters. And in that all filters, you're gonna click on that and you're gonna choose first and you're gonna choose Baltimore. And then you'll be able to see all of your first level connections in Baltimore, for example. So let's see if I can come to Towson University. There we go. So no worries if I'll, I'll test it before we finish up and see if I can do that again. But I have not seen that flag before from LinkedIn. Has anybody looked at the alumni network from Towson from their university page? Um, Carlton, will he get a notification that you viewed his profile? Um, the first way I did it when I did go to his profile, Carlton, yes, he would know that I looked at that. If I was cleaning out my network, I would go back into my settings, move to private, pull that person up, and then remove them. From my network, which was the second way I showed you, he would not because I wasn't looking at his whole profile. So great question. All right. What I'd like you to do on this page, Towson University, I'd like you to come to alumni and we could start looking. So I might say here, 1985 to 2015. I wanna look at all the alumni between those years. You might choose the four years you were at Towson. You can see it's now, it went from 113,000 to 77 alum. And notice, I can see where they live, where they work, what they do, what they've studied, what they're skilled at, and how I'm connected. So you can see I have 309 first level connections. I have 15,752 second level. So my first level I'm already connected to. Maybe I just wanna reach out and talk to them and say, hey, you should really think about joining Towson um, Alumni Network and really getting involved with Towson. My second level, I might really want to start to pay attention to. So now I want to say, okay, let's just find those people in Baltimore or whatever city you are in, because you could be anywhere. So I'm going to say Baltimore. So now I'm down to about 9,600. 
Um, here, I can look at companies they're working for. Maybe not a bad idea, right? I might want to say, you know what? I want to look for all the CEOs or presidents of companies. Notice my word or here, which will expand my search, is capitalized. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to search. And now I'm down to 2,500. And I'm going to start to see who these people are. So notice Vernon. He and I share 26 common connections. I don't know Vernon, but he's a second level connection. Also MassCom, right? Notice this connect button. Please do not click this connect button. LinkedIn gives you all these random places to connect. And I don't want you to do that, especially if that's somebody that could hire you or do business with you because we want to personalize the connection request. So I'm going to look at Vernon and there's a couple of things that I can potentially do here. I might look at his profile. I can see he's probably using LinkedIn. He's got some activity here. He's got a thousand connections. I'm going to click connect from here, add a note personalizing that note. Certainly if it's alum, I'm definitely gonna to reference Towson. And I'm gonna send him a connection, an invitation to connect. That's one way. I might also mention, Vernon, I noticed that we're connected through a number of people, including Ed Mullen and Sandy Tibbins. How many of you know Ed Mullen? Does anybody on this call know Ed Mullen? Probably has the largest social graph of anybody in Baltimore. I might just reference a couple of people's names. But if I do want an introduction, I'm going to look at all the people that I know that we share in common. Okay, somebody knows Vernon. That's funny. Uh, Melanie talked to Ed this morning. Kevin met Ed before. Yeah, Ed's, Ed is amazing. So I might look at this list and think, who will I ask? to introduce me. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit more. Share a profile. I'm going to drop Ed Mullen in there. And I'm going to say, Ed, how are you? What's going on this week? I talk to Ed all the time. By the way, I noticed you're connect connected to Vernon. Would you mind introducing me? If not, no worries. I don't know how well Ed actually knows Vernon. So I don't want it to make it, to have it be awkward. And then Ed can just finish this message up. He can just forward it. He could create a new introduction and introduce the two of us. This is how you become a center of influence. You are looking within your network and thinking about who you could put together. Because when you introduce two people, what typically happens? They talk about you. That's a good thing. All right, I have a couple questions. Um, Nancy, when I Googled my name, an old picture came up. How can you remove a picture from the web? Is it possible? Um, I'm definitely not the best person to. It really isn't. Um, I've got pictures for the last 10 years. Kind of crazy. Um, so I, I don't really know. It's just Google indexing information. So it is not, it's not something you can just do. Um, I would just keep more contemporary information up there so that it kind of pushes the other information down from uh, D. If you are in a position, for example, a presidential or lead position where you are not allowed to identify your specific duties or locations, how do you build connections when you cannot reveal specific duties, but you want to form related connections? For example, special assistance. Also, do you have a personal and professional link due to different connections? No, there's only one. You should have only one LinkedIn profile. Um, you're one person, one, one brand, if you will. Um, it gets confusing for people. There's a 50% chance they'll connect, you know, or they'll look at the wrong profile. So I'm not really sure I understand it, and I'm happy to take this offline. Um, if you're not allowed to identify your specific duties, I would just talk more high level about who you are and what your role is. 
Um, but depending on what your objective is, you would obviously need to be careful. However, on the other side of things, if people can't tell who you are, they may not be as likely to connect with you. So this is really kind of interesting to me, but that this kind of demands an, a little bit of an offline conversation. Um, so I'm sorry if I didn't answer that completely. So this is a way to look at your first level and look at the Towson Alumni Network and really start to think about who you should be connecting with. I have a client who went to the University of Connecticut. He was the quarterback of the football team. He spent six weeks on his alumni page and he created 34 new meetings with people who were his ideal client. Um, I have a cl um, client friend, many of you may also know Jim Reese from off at Kerman. He did the same exercise a few weeks ago and just told me last week, landed a new client um, based on his alumni network. Will everybody, can everybody think of a way that they could look at the Towson alumni network and think about how they could be connecting more strategically? just from that page. I'd love to see your answer to that. Um, some of my followers are also connections. When I pull up my followers list, older connections come up. Do you know anything about this algorithm? Does it work similar to profile views? First, all connections become followers. Okay, so all connections become followers. Not all followers are connections. So there are a number of people who I am not connected to, but they're my followers. They just pay attention. They like the content that I'm posting. So they're just following me. For some influencers, you're not gonna be able to connect with them or very large you know, CEOs of large Fortune 100 companies, you can follow them. So the, it's really less about the algorithm than about whether somebody chooses to have more connections or just followers. Great questions, love the questions. Some people like to connect with as many um, as others as possible. Is it better to have a lot of connections or those with people you truly know? Or just with those that are focal to your current needs that you are currently adding to and paring down? Great question, all depends on your strategy. If you're a recruiter, it's, it's a network. So you wanna be connected to as many people as possible because when you go do a search, you want people showing up in your search that would fit that role that you're recruiting for. So it's just a database. If you're on the business development side, that is also true. You need to have a good number of prospects. It is not unusual for us to work with somebody on the business development side and connect them with 1,000, 1,500 CEOs, presidents, business owners, because that's their target audience. And that might be to get 10, 12 clients. So there's definitely part of that. You need to expand that network. If you are maybe on the marketing side and you're not doing as much business development or operations or HR, you might not need 1,000 people. You want to ultimately build a network where there's greater engagement. If you just are connected to a lot of people and you don't know anybody, it's not really very, very valuable because not people are less likely to share your content. They're not going to introduce you to people. Their network may not be as, um, you know, well informed for your network. It's not helping you. I do want you, you can build out, but I do want you to have a core, like an inner circle that you have your COIs and then another circle. And maybe that's the Towson alum. And then beyond that, you go further out. So hopefully that makes sense. But once again, I'm always gonna to go to, to engagement and significance, and that's actually, you'll see that as a slide in a few minutes, significance over social influence. It will always win. So I'll, I'll just show you, I posted something, it's right now 1242. I probably posted this four hours ago, and we already have over a thousand views on this post. So this was, and the reason is because I called out a whole bunch of people that were on this group coaching session with me yesterday. And these are people that are part of our community. 
And so they've been sharing this and commenting on it and people in their networks have seen it. So this would be my, not necessarily all my COIs, but my, that inner circle, really important to build this on LinkedIn. All right, make sense? And I am going to, I'm gonna show you one thing on search and then I'm gonna move back in and we're gonna finish up with your LinkedIn profile and then next steps. Everybody with me so far? Good? Just give me a thumbs up or a yes in the chat and I'll know we're good. Awesome, love it. One of the things that is really important is that we start to go find more people. We've talked about that first level network and now we're ready to expand. We've understood who these people are in our network, but now we need to go find more of them. So what I do is I create what are called Boolean searches and I keep them in Notepad, for example. And I just come in and for example, I'm right now I'm gonna do a search. And now I don't know if my search is working, so you'll have to bear with me, but it'll still make sense. I'm gonna drop in my search and you will see that I have a number of titles here. I have a parentheses, quotation marks. So whenever I have two or more words like chief executive officer, I need to put them in quotation so LinkedIn sees that only as a phrase, not individual words. Then I use the word or capitalized, CEO or president or founder. You can see I keep going here. So I've got like four or five, and then that parens tells LinkedIn, hey, this is a complicated search. Put all of these people together. And that's why I have these, these are all Boolean modifiers. So it helps build out a search string. And let's see if we get anything. Perfect. So here, I now see, I can see 43 million people, kind of a lot of people. Remember I mentioned earlier when we were looking for those first level, this is, this is what that is, what I was describing for you to picture. All filters. And now remember before I was looking at first level and I said location because you wanna identify that. Now I'm just looking second level and I'm just gonna choose Baltimore since that's what, where we are. And I might come down and say, you know what, I'm looking for all the CEOs, president owners in IT and services. I can also come in and you know what, I could also put in Towson. Now I'm going to hit apply. And I can see 267 people. Anybody creating searches like this? Now the next most important piece is that I save this search alert. So when you have a basic membership in LinkedIn, free, we can build a profile in LinkedIn, we can build an awesome network in LinkedIn. Now we can search in LinkedIn and we haven't even, all we've spent is our time and energy, which is very valuable but we're not paying LinkedIn any money yet. We can now create these search alerts and LinkedIn will update you on a weekly basis of anyone who comes into your network based on this search. Very important, it will save you lots of time and effort. So save, come in and save these. You'll see CEO on this search, 61 new people, okay? And now, Sometimes I feel like in here, I can get some other things. So I'm just gonna pick up another part of that Boolean search and I'm gonna add this on. And I'm gonna do paren hyphen, oops, paren hyphen vice so now i want to take out anybody who might have vice in that so i'm going to go from 267 to 154 and i'm going to put i'm going to drop that whole search string let me do it this way so i can get the whole thing and i'm going to drop this whole search string 
right in the chat. And I recommend that you come and you grab that out of the chat and then break down whatever kind of search you need to do. Like you fill in, just follow this format and that will help you do really good searches in LinkedIn. Will it always be accurate? No, because it's being pulled from the, the, gener uh, the user's profile. So sometimes that's not accurate, but it's better than anything I've used in terms of other tools. So what I wanna do is I wanna now come in and I just wanna talk about profile tips. We have a few more minutes and I wanna jump back over. So here's my friend Kiefer, does anybody know Kiefer? Um, Towson alum wears it proudly on his LinkedIn profile. Please, um, yes, I just um, put it, Asia, in the chat. Everybody should see that. Stephen, could you double check that in case people are not seeing that, but it should be there. Um, so does anybody know Kiefer? Um, he's awesome, local um, business person, really, really terrific. You should reach out to him, tell him I said he should connect with you. And love this, he's got a background image. Please put a background image in there. It draws people in. You can see from his profile right from this area in his headline, it's not just his title. Um, it's not just his title, it is keywords that are um, built in so that we're telling LinkedIn more about that person, right? So he risk management insurance, risk management is a great keyword, does a lot of mentoring, he's a connector. Um, so I know something about Keeper right from the top of his profile. Love how he does a really good job with that. So here are some tips. Right in the first person, does anybody ever go out to a networking event and introduce themselves in the third person? That'd be kind of weird, right? First person, LinkedIn's your digital handshake. So I want you to think first person. If it feels really uncomfortable, that's okay, but it's much more interesting. Identify four to six keywords that best describe who you are and what you do. These four to six keywords should be very descriptive. They should be unique to you. And they should not include, should not include experienced, dynamic, results-oriented, strategic, creative, motivated. We have all those buzzwords. Um, oh, Stephen, can you, okay, it was sent privately to Stephen. I'll make sure everybody has that. And I want these keywords woven throughout. So risk management, for example, for Kiefer should be woven throughout his profile. I want you to create trust and interest. You can do that. Credibility, you want to be able to um, create credibility. Why not include those words? Because they're the most overused words on LinkedIn. If everybody's experienced and certainly at a certain level, most people are strategic thinkers. Um, they just are so overused that they don't help you stand out. So I want you to stand out. Remember you're telling your story right for your audience. This is very, very important. I want you to write to your best customer. I want you to write to that employer you want to work for. I want you to write to that donor, to that sponsor, whomever you believe is your number one audience based on your strategic outcomes for LinkedIn. Why are you using LinkedIn? Who are you trying to connect with? This is brand new. If you've done any behavioral assessments, has anybody done DISC, PI, Strengths Finders? Um, the list goes on and on. Kevin. Okay, which one have you done, Kevin? I would put that assessment on your profile. It immediately, DISC, it immediately tells me something about you. DISC is funny. I can interview somebody for a profile. I'm like, oh, you want, you're a high D because you want like a paragraph and three bullet points. Strengths Finder, love Strengths Finder. Put it on there. Achiever, learner, strategic. It tells people something about you. It's absolutely fabulous to have on your profile. And the other thing, so talk about these soft skills, a collaborate, so collaboration, but speak to how you're collaborative. Putting your tech stack on there. So what does that mean? 
hey, I use Zoom, GoToMeeting, WebEx, um, whatever the tools are. I know how to use Trello. I know, I know how to use Slack. These are really important. This tech stack, the tools that you use, Calendly, um, we're now using something called Soapbox to do quick videos and your soft skills, that collaboration, teamwork, initiative, those sorts of things, really, really important, really important to add. Let your personality come out on LinkedIn. If you are funny, be funny. If you don't know if you're funny, test it at home first. Do not test it on LinkedIn. I want that personality to come out. That's what somebody's going to remember. Put a description about your company or your value proposition. Not every business is a household name. So let's build that in. And I highly recommend when we do LinkedIn profiles for teams, you put the same company description, because then if I'm looking at several people from the company page, everybody sounds alike in that paragraph, just that paragraph. And that makes the marketing look more cohesive. I love Trello too, Julie. Keep your paragraph super short because of the phone. Make it easy for people to scan and complete all the sections. So that might be the experience section where you add a description. Education, make sure that's up to date and all your accomplishments. Certifications, spell them out. Don't use acronyms because when they're spelled out, awesome keywords, okay? I knew that was really quick. I usually do this for like three hours. So I'm gonna now just come over and go to this slide and then we're gonna go to next steps. Everything that you do on LinkedIn here are some things I want you to think about. Be professionally conversational. And that's a little bit of a skill, right? Don't go over the line. This is not Facebook or Twitter. Um, be positive, be forward thinking, contribute, add to the conversation. Stay high level, no pitching, no selling. You'll get shut down. Always have a call to action, even in your about section. You can reach me. At, and then an email or a mobile number, whatever you might want to use, but have a call to action. Be pleasant. Be the first person to say hello. And personalize as much as possible. The more you personalize, the more response you're going to get, the more people will be interested in talking with you. From there, let's talk next steps. Craft a plan, including time blocking. Put 20 minutes on your calendar two or three times a week get really comfortable with linkedin as i mentioned to alexa at the beginning it is not intuitive linkedin trust me so you want to get comfortable and master one thing at a time work on your personal brand and your profile stand out i want it to be your unique story and that nobody else could pick that up copy and paste it onto their linkedin profile Download those first level connections and identify the gaps and opportunities. Who can you be reaching out to? And use this time working remotely to recultivate and nurture first level connections. Know the kind of content that's valuable to your network. How can you inform, educate, and even entertain your network so that you can be remembered? And I mentioned this a few minutes ago, but I can't emphasize it enough. Go for significance. Don't worry about having the largest following and the most engagement. Start with your core group. Personalize, personalize, personalize. It's a little bit like location, 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 but it will make a difference. Use the Towson Alumni Network as that common bond. Everybody has a memory. And think about how to tap in and create some emotion in that messaging. So my question is, how do you currently present to a digital social world? How can you extend your presence and your brand message through LinkedIn? These are important questions to ask. The most important, I think, will you actually review, take action and implement something as a result of today's session? I would love to see if everybody would put in 
one or two things that they'll commit to, I'd love to see that. I actually have another slide about that too. So here, I'm gonna drop this into the chat using the alumni page, great. Review my profile and check first level connections, terrific. So I want you to take, change my URL already, that's awesome. So here is the link for our membership site. You can choose the pro version and you can use this promo code and you will have 30 days access to our um, membership site. We have so much content. You can deep dive and you will go through this and you can learn a great deal. Awesome, look at the alumni page, change my headline. That's terrific. I love all of that. That's really great. And um, let me just say, I mean, to do that, one more slide here. Here, you can actually take a picture of this. You could print this out or you can create your own version. I'm happy to send it to you. This is your commitment card. So here you can just fill this out and mark it down in your calendar, 20, you know, 21 days from now, 30 days from now, did you achieve these? We have clients right now doing so well because they're doing very specific activity and they are getting results on LinkedIn. And I want that for each one of you as well. So with one minute to spare, thank you so much for your time and attention today. It means a lot. It's such a privilege. Time right now is our most one of our most important assets. So thank you for spending time with me. Um, Stephen and Alexa, thank you for inviting me on today. Thank you. Am I still muted? Nope, you're here. I hear you. All right. <laughs> thank you so much, Colleen. And at this time, this concludes our webinar on helping professionals navigate LinkedIn. Colleen, you have been amazing and so informational. So we thank you again. Um, this presentation will be available, will be made available in the coming weeks on our social media channels. Make sure you follow the TU Alumni Association on our social media channels and on Tiger Connect, our alumni community. These details are posted on the screen. We hope you can join us for another one of our live events and webinars. You can learn more about these events at alumni.towson.edu under the events tab. Next Tuesday, we will be hosting another live webinar hosted by the TU Counseling Center's Dr. Kiba Gardner. You can join us at noon to learn more about building resilience in the era of COVID-19. Then on Thursday, May 28th, the Business and Leadership Alumni Alliance will be hosting a panel discussion on navigating the highly anticipated reopening of our country. The panel will consist of local business leaders from various industries and will provide a comprehensive and expert view on the challenges that lie ahead as we look to recover from the pandemic. So thank you again, Colleen, and thank, thank you, you so much for everyone for joining us, and we hope to see you next time.